You are about to hear a telephone conversation between a man and a woman about a rental property. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 7. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 7. Central Realty, Jill speaking. How can I help you? Yes, hello Jill. I've got a problem, a complaint I wish to register. Who should I speak to? You'll want to speak to Tracy, the residential manager. Just a moment and I'll put you through. Thanks. Hello, this is Tracy. I understand your rent is going to be increased. Yes, this is why I'm calling. I was told that my rent would not be increased for the length of my six-month contract, which I signed only four months ago. What's going on? Is my landlord allowed to do this? I see. Yes. Okay. That seems strange. Look, can I take down some of your particulars and I'll register a formal complaint to the landlord on your behalf? Yes, sure. That'd be good. Firstly, name and address contact details. Yes, Jane McSweeney. That's M-C-S-W-E-E-N-Y. 3 Mauger Street. That's M-A-U-G-H-E-R Street. Windery, 3355. And the phone there? Yes, you can contact me on 334756, extension 3176. I generally arrive home by 6 o'clock in the evening, so you can call me around that time, but not after 9. Oh, sorry, 8.30, because that's the time I leave for work. Okay, so I should note down that the problem is that your landlord wants to raise your rent. And when did you first move in? Yes, well, the contract began on August 1st, and... Oh, hang on. Sorry, that's the ending date. We actually moved in on February the 1st. Before you listen to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 8 to 10. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 8 to 10. Okay. Good. Now, if need be, you will have to send a letter to the Rental Tenancy Board. But as I said, first let us approach your landlord on your behalf and see if we can work out the problem before it gets to that situation. I'd be very surprised if you have to send a letter. 95% of these kinds of problems get solved early on. Okay. Now, if you have any problems you need to discuss, feel free to come in and talk with the general manager. In the meantime, if you would just wait until we receive an answer from your landlord, we'll be able to then plan our next step. Is there anything else I could be doing? Well, you could write a letter to the RTB listing all the events as they happened from your point of view. But as I say, hold on to it. Don't send it unless we have to. Well, that's about it for now. Thanks for your call. I'm sure we can sort this out. Thanks very much for your help. I hope we can sort it out too. Bye for now. Yes, bye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a lecture given by a counselor. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 11 to 15.
Hi, I am your counsellor for this year. Today we will visit the facilities available to you on our campus. As students, you should take advantage of everything you have available to you. How many of you like sports? Well, I hope most of you do, because our school has great sports facilities. We have an indoor gym with state-of-the-art equipment. First, I want to tell you about our basketball facilities. There are two basketball courts. Both are full court and open for student use. We offer basketball leagues that all students are invited to join. Just sign up with a team. Usually, there are games on the courts, but during league time, only the teams are allowed to use the courts. The basketball courts are open 24 hours a day. If you want a job, you can be a referee at the games. Next, I want to tell you about the tennis facilities. We have five tennis courts available for student use. The tennis courts are open every day, 8 a.m. until 10 in the evening. You should call ahead to reserve a court because they are very popular and can often be booked weeks in advance. There are rackets and balls available for rent at the front desk of the courts. There is an Olympic-sized swimming pool that is open for students and the general public. There are also showers and locker rooms available. The swimming pool is open every day, 9 a.m. until 7 in the evening. There are openings for the position of lifeguards, so if you are looking for a job in the sun, this might be good for you. Now look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 16 to 20. There are also two weight rooms and a gymnastics room. The weight rooms have all the standard equipment available. Please check with the gym to see the open hours because they vary from time to time. The gymnastics room is usually not open for individual users because there are almost always classes held in the room. However, if you are interested, you may sign up for gymnastics classes. Plus, if you like martial arts and boxing, we offer classes for everyone, from beginners to advanced students. Please check the schedule for availability. There is everything available, from Chinese wushu to Brazilian wrestling. I will talk for a brief moment about our library system. Our campus has three libraries available to undergraduate students. One additional graduate library and one faculty library. The libraries are open daily until midnight except for during testing periods when the libraries will be open 24 hours. Please look on a map to see where the libraries are located. All students with a valid ID can check out books with a maximum of 10 books at a time. Books can be checked out for a two-week period and then renewed for one month maximum. After that, there is a $1 fine per week that the book is overdue. I will repeat that. There is a hefty $1 fine per week. So it is a good idea to return books on time. If you lose a book, then you will have to repay the library for it, plus a fine. If you damage a book, most likely you will have to repay the value of the book. So please, enjoy the library facilities, but take care of the school's belongings. The library is also equipped with 200 computers for student use. They are all internet ready and available for use. You must sign up at the library for one hour time slots. You may sign up for up to three consecutive slots at a time. No one can use the computers without first signing in at the library. That is it for now. Thank you for your attention. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part three. Part three. You are going to hear part of a lecture on some useful information for your travelling around Britain. Listen to the lecture and complete the notes below. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-five. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-five. Good afternoon, and welcome to the session on Britain. This afternoon, I would like to provide some useful information for you about travelling around Britain. Britain has over seven hundred tourist information centres. You will find them at major ports, airports. Stations, historic landmarks and towns, and holiday centres. So just look out for this sign that says "Tourist Information." The staff will be able to answer your holiday queries, as well as provide essential maps, guides, and brochures. Tourist information centres at major ports and airports in London, and addresses of British Tourist Authority European offices, are all listed on the tourist information centres. Now, let's talk about the telephone in Britain. You know, Britain is well supplied with public telephones. Street kiosks take lop coins. In city centres, mainline railway stations, airports, and central London underground stations, payphones and card phones are in operation. For the latter, small plastic phone cards are used, and these come in ten, twenty. Forty, one hundred, and two hundred units, and can be bought at post offices, news kiosks, station bars, and shops where the green and white card phone sign is displayed. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions twenty-six to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-six to thirty. When using the different public telephone systems, make sure you read the dining instructions carefully. Now let's see the banks in Britain. There are twenty-four hour banks at London's two main airports. One is Heathrow, and the other is Gatwick. Otherwise, banks are normally open from nine thirty to three thirty, Monday to Friday. Barclays Bank and National Westminster Bank offer a Saturday morning service at some of their branches. National Gyro Banks has 42 bureaux de change located in post offices throughout the country in main tourist areas. Opening hours are 9 to 5:30 weekdays, 9 to 12:30 Saturday mornings. One exception to this is the Trafalgar Square office, whose opening hours are eight to eight weekdays and Saturdays, and ten to five on Sundays. The Bureau de Change services are available to overseas visitors. Visitors can change their money there. You can also change money at Bureau de Change, large hotels, department stores, and travel agents. Be sure to check in advance the rate of exchange and the commission charged. As these vary considerably, wherever possible, you are advised to use the bank or bureau de change, which conforms to the BTA code of conduct. In most cases, this is indicated by display of the code. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part four. Part four. You will hear part of a lecture about product life cycles. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. I'm going to begin my lecture today with a look at product life cycles. Now, as we go through the product life cycle, I will be trying to raise some issues which are important with regard to each phase of the cycle. I won't have all the answers for you this morning. This one of the lecture series is just to get you started, and I hope interested. Let's start with the first phase of the cycle, that of product design. This is really the most important part of the cycle. We often talk as if it is consumers who are responsible for recycling, and so they are. But in reality, the major responsibility must be borne by designers. They can design products where recycling is easy and cheap, or difficult and expensive. In the latter case. The likelihood is that recycling, though technically feasible, will not in fact take place. Now, don't jump ahead because the second stage is not product manufacturing, but rather that of materials acquisition. This is the activity we do when we mine coal or other minerals such as gold or iron or copper. In addition to mining. There is harvesting, which includes the cutting down of trees as a first step in the making of furniture or paper, or fishing. These activities have costs, which are not only money costs. Pollution is one of the extra costs. We have also to think whether the resources we use are renewable, such as trees, or not, such as coal and other minerals. The third stage is not manufacturing either. It is materials processing. This is where we take the raw materials and use energy to change them into a form that can be used in manufacturing.、Uh, for example, trees must be turned into paper or oil into plastic. The cotton plants that grow in the fields must be turned into cloth. All of these activities require the use of chemical processes, and as with all chemical processes, waste is produced. Often of a dangerous kind, and now we come to the manufacturing stage. This is usually the most expensive in terms of cost and energy and waste. The wastes are often those that contribute to global climate change. For example, we make forty-one billion glass containers, mostly bottles, each year, and we throw most of them away. A lot of manufacturing seems unnecessary if we could only organize things better, and this could mean greater profits for the manufacturing companies too. Stage five is packaging. Many products are packed in paper or plastic, which themselves, of course, have their own processes and costs. Excessive packaging is often criticized, but it must be remembered that packaging serves a purpose. Often more than one purpose, such as maintaining freshness and hygiene, as well as providing information. In our globalized world, we must never forget the next stage, which is distribution. This is the stage where transportation and energy play a big part. Lorries, trucks, trains, planes, and ships all use up the precious stocks of oil, and as we know. Generate greenhouse gases, which, as we hear again and again, contribute to climate change. Stage seven is the point of it all: using the product. 
looking after products, using them in the recommended ways, timely repair and maintenance all reduce the need for early replacement and reduce the number of products in landfill sites. We should not encourage the purchase of single-use products, that is, products which are designed for use on one occasion only and then to be thrown away and replaced. Um, I'm going to skip a stage for a moment and move straight on to the final stage, which is disposal, putting the product in the bin. This is the end of the life of the product and we lose it completely. It may have only a little value, but it does have a value even at this stage of its life, even in fact when it's actually in the landfill site. Now, I missed out one stage. This is a cycle within a cycle. That is, within the life cycle of the product, there can be a closed loop cycle which can extract more value from the product. This is the reuse and recycle loop. It is a closed loop because, in theory, it can continue forever, though in practice, of course, this is not possible. Recycling products mean that they can be used to make more of the same product. Uh, CDs, bottles, books, or that they can be used to make different ones. For example, one pound of recycled paper can make six cereal boxes. And if we recycled all our newspapers, we could save 40,000 trees a day. Now, with this approach to the life cycle of a product in mind, we can go on to consider life cycle analysis. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.